You might say the Willamette River defines the city of Portland. Its flowing water attracts boaters, fishers, and swimmers by the thousands every year. And its beauty draws nature lovers to its banks every day. But alongside that beauty is also a hidden risk, a risk we cannot see, at least not until this ground starts to shake which is exactly what scientists say it will do when the Cascadia subduction zone, a coastal fault some 150 miles away, ruptures, generating a magnitude 8 or 9 earthquake. Within minutes, the quake's damaging shockwaves will reach Portland. The intense shaking will turn this solid ground into something more like soup. It's a phenomenon called liquefaction. Liquefaction is the state of soil where because of shaking, your soil essentially turns into liquid. It's the same phenomenon that swept away entire neighborhoods in Indonesia last year during a magnitude 7.5 quake. And one Dr. Arash Kusravivar and his colleagues at Portland State University have been studying for years. We have a huge liquefaction problem in Portland. In fact, anywhere you have loose soils or sands that are saturated and potential earthquakes, you have the risk of liquefaction. The San Francisco waterfront, for example, like the Marina District, is at risk. So is the Los Angeles Harbor. Much of the city of Seattle sits on liquefiable soil. Following the 2001 6.8 Nisqually earthquake there, Boeing Field Airport had to be shut down. Liquefaction had damaged the runway. This map shows the areas at highest risk of liquefaction in the Portland area. Portland International Airport in red there is sitting on one of them, as is the northwest industrial area where much of the region's fuel is stored. You can kind of get a sense of it when you, if you look at Google Earth Maps and you look down along that area, you can see the white tanks which are all containing the fuel, um, the fuel that Portland and Oregon uses. Those miles of white tanks lining the river store about 90 percent of Oregon's fuel, including nearly all of the jet fuel used at the Portland airport. When the ground below them liquefies in a large earthquake, those tanks will likely fail. Should the earthquake hit, that ground will liquefy and the tanks will become unstable and potentially spill into the Willamette River, which is an environmental hazard. But then also we don't have our fuel source um, for following the earthquake. A problem the doctor, in collaboration with the National Science Foundation and Arizona State University, is working to solve on this northeast Portland test site. Uh, we're uh, a few miles from the airport. Using something invisible to the naked eye. We're using the bacteria and the bugs that are already in the soil. We're just stimulating them, and then they're doing all the work for us. That's right, tiny bugs. This is called a bioremediation method. And it essentially uses the bioorganisms in the soil to desaturate the soil. It's the first time this technique has been tested in the U.S. The team injects a mixture of fertilizer and food grade material into wells. The microscopic bugs already in the ground eat the fertilizer. As the little guys metabolize their food, they create bubbles, which then help to dry out the soil. Here is where we inject the nutrients. Four weeks later, the soil is tested to see if it will stay solid in a major quake. So how do you test the soil to see what it will do in an earthquake without an earthquake? Well, you make the ground shake, and that's where this comes in. It's called T-Rex. This monster machine simulates the shaking of an earthquake. The result? The results that we were able to get from the T-Rex testing was able to show us that the desaturation that we were able to accomplish with the treatment did indeed result in mitigating liquefaction. Traditional methods to stabilize liquefiable ground often involve injecting cement or building some sort of stone column in the ground to try and stabilize the soil under the structure. It's at a cost of millions of dollars and in the case of soil in Portland may not even work. The researchers say this new method would cost a fraction of that price. Other mitigation methods are about 50 to 100 times more expensive. Um, and a lot of times you can't apply them to existing structures. It would have minimal impact on the environment, but major impacts when it comes to keeping shaking soils stable during a large quake. It's really letting nature do its thing and then we can benefit from it. This could be a game changer in mitigating liquefaction risk, not just in Portland but all over the world.